Hello and good morning everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host Scott Ramp and I'm here to tell you about what kind of things are happening this week beyond future things that are going to be happening, current things that are going on right now. There's a lot to talk about. I got city council. It was a short meeting but they're doing a couple changes within their meeting format which is going to open up the doors for longer engagement for the public comment while also being able to uh, adhere and uh, reflect on people's comments to any uh, future public hearings during this time, while also at the same time that the City of Missoula plans to expand and continue doing their uh, Zoom meetings, but they are starting to do more committee meetings, which falls on Wednesdays lives during the regular times. You guys can see all that on channel 189, and you can visit more information to go on MCAT.org, or you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. But let's start things off with a little bit of news that's going on here. So here's a little bit of news roundup. Um, What's happening in uh, Willow Creek, Montana, uh, they're one of the first schools, not only in Montana, but in the nation, that plans on reopening their doors for the, for the last two and a half weeks that are happening of the school year, uh, of the calendar school year. Um, part of this has to do with the fact that the school has about 60 kids, and about two-thirds, the majority uh, surveyed in Willow Creek um, requested that they want some their kids to go back to some form of normality. There's about... Uh, According to the numbers on here, there's uh, 56 kids in total in the whole entire school from kindergarten to high school, and the ability to social distance learning is easy for them, but other schools have made it clear that they cannot teach kids and maintain social distancing at this time. Of course, 18 staff members will return after parents they surveyed, and Willow Creek will continue their uh, school for the rest of the two and a half weeks before the summer break. Uh, District Superintendent Bonnie Lauer of Willow Creek um, Elementary, um, of the school systems, um, said that we're not taking this lightly. We don't want people to think that we're being irresponsible by making this choice. We're trying to do what we feel is in the best interest of our students. Um, while schools in other areas, such as Missoula, continue to uh, keep their doors closed for the rest of the year, many questions arise. Graduation of the class of 2020. Uh, many schools are going through a route of prepackaged videos and slideshows that would already show during the ceremonies, but video chats, live streams, Zoom meetings, and stuff like that are being considered for graduation. One of the big, biggest things that's happening within Missoula um, and pertains to graduation is the uh, potential for... Um, um, the board meeting where they're going to be discussing this. One of the things they want to try to avoid is many, a large social gathering, which is going to have a, a lot of the students and their <coughs> families coming together from across the state and beyond in the region um, showing up for graduation. And uh, so far, phase one um, for the COVID-19 um, reopening of Montana uh, still is kind of weary about it, and they still want people to know that there shouldn't be more than 25 people um, gathering in one place at one time. Um, and part of phase two is 50, and they're going to work on this going forward. Of course, um, former President Barack Obama uh, is uh, using um, live streaming. He's doing a commencement ceremonies virtually. Um, and he'll, um, I, I, and you know, you might be wondering if he's going to use Webster's Dictionary to define some things. But of course, anyways, MCPS and Missoula will look into the matter further uh, next Tuesday during their Tuesday board meeting. So this is happening um, May 12th, and it's going to go live on MCAT channel 189. They're going to do their online um, Zoom meeting, um, and they're going to talk a little bit more about graduation. So far, uh, the last couple of meetings and have to do with whether or not they're going to open the school, and so far, MCPS is not opening their school, but now they're talking about graduation. And so far, uh, one of the things that just re happened recently, I might show you guys a little bit of that video uh, while I'm talking right now, but um, part of the graduation is during the um, last Friday, I believe it was May 1st, uh, the first uh, Friday of the month. Um, the uh, MCPS schools and used MCPS stadiums where they lit up the scoreboard for the uh, um, for their location and uh, reflected the class of 2020. And uh, kids and parents were driving around in the cars honking their horns um, in the stadium as well. So I might be able to show you that as um, as well. Um, of course, uh, things seem to be going smoothly right now, but um, but in the end, we must use the information given to us a way as to step up and stop the spread of a highly infectious disease that has no vaccine, remind you, in the short run of things, with a projected death toll of 135,000 people by August. Originally, it was projected that there were only going to be 60,000 deaths by August, um, 
but with a certain surge of, of coronavirus that is being spread and the opening of the doors, they're projecting the high number of 135,000 people by the 4th of August. Um, and this is according to the University of Washington, which was more than double of the previous prediction, which was 68,000 deaths. Um, so far, there are 60,308 deaths, confirmed deaths, earlier this week. Of course, this is ongoing. This is constantly changing. Uh, this weekend looks like a pretty cloudy. They're going to be. Uh, it's going to be partly sunny this weekend as well. So, if you want to go out and about outside, there's nothing wrong with going outside. But if you find yourself in a crowded grocery store or anything like that, um, a lot of them are moving forward with. Um, requiring masks so if you really think about it no shirt no shoes no mask no service so if you kind of keep that in mindset that could be a, a good way to help uh, curve the spread of the disease uh, whether uh, you're worried about it or not it's just something that for everybody all right so um, enough grandstanding and soapboxing here's a couple new programs going to be airing on MCAT this weekend if you're interested in finding out more about these programs you can go on to MCAT.org and visit our video on demand uh, watch now um, but without further ado here's a bunch of programs that will be airing this weekend if you guys are planning on staying inside <laughs> We could tell her life story as I just did to you and never mention her role in the boycott and it would still be a remarkable story of persistence. And we can choose to remember the pluck of Barbara Rose Johns. We can know that resistance to evil and oppression is not just a matter of staying at it. It's also a matter of having enough pluck to think in wily ways, those that arts outsmart even the most formidable of opponents. Barbara John's story is not only significant because it started the modern civil rights movement, but also because of the creativity, the spirit, the spirit, and the outright bravado that it represents. So we have 42 groundwater wells. Okay, the water rights for those wells, we can pump. 73 million gallons per day. That's how much water rights we have. In the summertime, when it's extremely hot, we normally uh, pump 42 to 43 million gallons a day. So we have a lot of capacity to grow. But along with that capacity, as everybody knows, is our leakage. We, the system does leak. So if we can work, if we can keep reinvesting the money, we can keep um, replacing water mains, that we can reduce leakage, that that gives us more capacity for future growth because we're nowhere near being into our, our water rights. Um, the, the majority of new cases, though, is related to this multiple partners with partner concurrency. So people, things like uh, polygamy, like uh, a man being married to multiple women, there does act, that does go on. Or somebody uh, has a, a wife in uh, maybe uh, one community and then consistently travels to another community so has a permanent person there. These things are uh, culturally acceptable in Zambia and it, uh, it's a big part of why there's this increased risk. He was uh, maybe a month after this picture during all, all the confusion and everything, he was shot by the, uh, our, the, the helicopter that our battalion commander was flying in. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we, had, uh, we had left them back to guard packs while we went forward to do some business. And uh, they, it was at the time the major offensive was going on and somehow it didn't register and they thought they were seeing enemy troops way down there from the air. Yeah, unfortunately, the only one that got hit was uh, Roy. Roy carried that uh, that 60 round in him. It just cut through the soft tissue of his abdomen, lodged in his hip, 
And eventually, uh, when they did surgery, about 30 years later, they took it out. Hey guys, welcome back. Of course, while uh, movies are not really popping out as much, uh, a lot of live, a lot of streaming services, a lot of programs that are airing um, online and beyond are popping up. So I'm going to take advantage of this. It's time for pre-critic. Kicking off next week, uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt movie, Kimmy vs. the Reverend. Um, this is a uh, movie, uh, a, basically, uh, have you ever watched Room and wanted to be like, I wish this was funny. Well, you got Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which follows a girl who uh, was kidnapped as a young kid and uh, kind of uh, gets locked in a certain time where NSYNC and Friends were still a big thing. And it's basically, a, it's a for 90s kids who uh, who like the references and all that stuff, but it's kind of seen through the lens of a, a, a young... Um, joyous person who sees the world with rose-colored glasses and you get to see the um, okay so here's the rub the movie it's a do-it-yourself adventure so basically have you ever watched a movie and was like wondering is like you know what this movie needs a pop quiz it, while you're watching it and if you don't get it you don't get the ending so that's basically what you're gonna get from this movie uh, do I suggest you watch it I don't know I like the show but a lot of times the movie seems to fall flat and a choose your own adventure movie is the one thing that me personally have never loved or liked. Um, moving on. Uh, and now we have a show. It's a show that just popped up recently. It's on Amazon Prime, uh, if you uh, trust Amazon. Um, Upload. It basically stars a really good looking guy who uh, gets what's coming to him. But in this case, um, when he dies, he gets uploaded. And the part of this show is called Upload. And the whole idea behind it is that you can upload your brain into a computer and that's it. You're ba it's basically like VR chat or Second Life and that's pretty much it. And really, they like I think they kind of dropped the ball on this because it's like, here's the future, but we're going to reference the past for most of our comedy. But because, you know, the future's never exactly what it looks like when they're trying to predict the future. It's weird. They should just go full sci-fi with a lot of these shows rather than just kind of like, this is what actually could happen rather than this is what we, th this is its own world. And they're trying to follow the rules of reality within, yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it. But anyways, Upload stars uh, Arrow's uh, cousin. Uh, I think it's Robbie ML. Anyways, you can watch the show. It's... It's basically what you see is what you get from the trailer. You don't really get too much from a more of it. There's a mystery in there, and then there's other things that happen. All right, moving on. Now let's talk about some games that are coming out. Uh, this is a virtual, I don't know if this is a VR game or a first-person type game, but it's called SnowRunner. Uh, have you ever watched those shows, Ice Road Truckers? But they didn't get the licensing, so they decided to come up with a better name called SnowRunner. So you're basically, you're a trucker on ice, and you're... Uh, basically be an ice road trucker and uh, within the safety of your home you, you're driving a truck um, and you're constantly crashing and running into things and failing all the time so this is a game that will either embolden you to become an ice road trucker or completely freak you out so uh, these are a couple things that are happening uh, what you guys can do to entertain yourself um, or not I mean, these, like, from what I've seen, I've, I'm usually kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to entertainment, so here you go. And speaking of bottom of the barrel, here is uh, the next edition of Dub and Stuff, and then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about uh, Mullen Road, which is going to get quite an expansion when it comes to connecting Mullen Road to Broadway uh, without uh, using the conge congested traffic that is Reserve Street. So I'll, I'll, I'll do, talk about more about that after this new Dub and Stuff. Elevator, huh? Am I on the right floor? Oh, oh, hey, it's a pretty lady. Do you want to come in? Yes, but I can't stay long. <laughs> you might have noticed I put carpet on the ground so you don't need to have no sound effects for heels. <laughs> you look like you could use a kombucha. Oh, no, don't trouble yourself. Oh, no, I insist, honey. 
You ain't one of those goop ladies, are you? You know, those health kind of ladies who put health stuff inside health things? Hmm. A cigarette. Well, I was gonna quit, but... You smoke when you drink, I get it, honey. Well, the funny thing is, is that I drink all the time. Here, let me help you. Oh, thank you. Anything else? Um, uh, I don't think so. Does the cigarette have eucalyptus in it? No, it's only gonna kill you. Oh, that's wonderful. Give or take 30 to 40. Hmm, maybe a scientist will come up with smoking that's good for you. <laughs> Anything good for you is not addictive well, at what all. What about the runner's high? Don't laugh at me, I'm trying to be sincere. What I have right here is a health plan. You're gonna need this if you want to live to be 100 years old. You look like you got good genes. But we live in a man's world, which means you can't <gasps> wear jeans. Uh, well, that's just mean. And unfair. Well, what can I say? I'm a doctor. There's more to life than essential oils. You gotta treat your body like a temple. <laughs> Whatever. And I don't mean the Temple of Doom. The worst of the Indiana Jones movies. Now drink your kombucha. I got a gun on you, and I'm gonna shoot. Well, then, uh, I guess I'll just hand over your health plan. You do know your gun's not cocked. I can attack you. Thanks for the advice, honey. After I take this meal plan, I'll be invincible. Hmm. Was my misogyny? So I like totally robbed that guy. Hmm, that seemed like quite the story, Miss Anderson. Let me ask you this simple question. Oh, please, could you make it complicated for me? All right, one train leaves Houston. Not that complicated. Well, then, why'd you do it? I told you, I need a health care plan. Why is that? Health care is so expensive. Hmm, well, I don't blame you for your actions. But I don't like the way you acted on those actions. Hmm, one cannot survive on essential oils. But you tried your best, after all. I'm really glad you came to me. I'm here for you. Don't you understand? Maybe you should get a lawyer. And maybe a health guru. To help with all your sorts of health problems and whatever. So, what do you think? You've got to be kidding me. I asked for help, and you're not helping me. Why aren't you helping me? Well, you robbed a doctor at gunpoint. Man, don't you understand this? You can't just go around stealing people's guns inside their homes and- That's all circumstantial and semantics. And besides, what are my options in this endeavor? Well, clearly jail time. There is absolutely no way I'm going to jail on this. Ooh, ooh, mm. I don't like the sound of that hmm sound. Besides, is there anything you can do to help me in this case? Hmm? Just as I thought. You're no help to anyone. Well, that's begun. You have a sharp tongue for someone who asks a lot of questions. I only ask a lot of questions because I expect a lot of answers. Oh. Oh, fine. I'm gonna help you, but it's not gonna be cheap. I have a coupon. That's not how coupons work, honey. Well, if I'm paying full price, I expect you full treatment. Oh, um. I guess I could do that. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Uh, oh, please, just stop. Whatever. Hey guys, welcome back. As we dive into May, we will begin to see committee meetings popping in on Wednesdays to start to take shape. Um, and part of those are admin and finance, and they're also looking at um, continuing budget committee meetings. And part of the budget committee meetings is that they start talking about the next year's fiscal year budget, um, and then they approve it in uh, August of 2020 to uh, approve of the fiscal year 2021. And so the city has to kind of balance the budget and work on this. And part of that has to do with uh, one of the big things within the city, which is this uh, shutting down the economy, for a whole month and trying to figure, because a lot of bills still have to be paid 
the power companies are still expecting people to pay their bills, and there's a lot of things going on with that. And also, just a quick little uh, side note is, if you haven't already heard, is that uh, the Parking Commission will start acting up again. Or, I don't know why I said acting up, but we'll be starting um, issuing tickets, and you have to pay to park starting May 18th. If you haven't already heard this, I'm just giving you guys an update just in terms of if you guys are planning on going downtown, you guys can go downtown, park there for free until May 18th, where the uh, meter monitors of the Parking Commission will continue doing their uh, ticketing for people who uh, don't pay to park. Anyways, going back to what's going on here, is that um, meetings are still online. Um, and here, we're going to kick things off. This is the um, City of Missoula's first meeting, um, which uh, started at 6 p.m., which is their now new regular meeting time. Um, instead of 7 p.m. Um, so from now on, city council meetings, um, regardless if they're online or as they slowly return to being at the city council chambers, um, all the meetings from now and henceforth will be <laughs> at 6 p.m. All right, so let's kick things off, kick things off with Jeremy Keene uh, with the Developmental Services, uh, who has a presentation in, um, during this public hearing in regards to a build grant project that is affecting Mullen Road and connecting to Broadway. And so we're trying to connect some new streets between Mullen Road and Broadway, which will help alleviate some congestion, uh, create some uh, improved safety, and the net result is about three miles of new roads. 3.7 miles of new trails and about a half mile of um, stream restoration and flood control on Grant Creek. And all of this will open up access to about 1,500 acres of developable land in that area. Of course, along with that, Keene said that this would achieve better safety with sidewalks, trails, uh, alleviate congestion. Um, if you uh, of course, building houses, you increase traffic. It kind of goes hand in hand with people going to and from their places of work. The area, of course, they also mentioned the area has a tax base that could increase the city's tax base by more than $2.6 billion and support up to 7,000 new jobs with this new development. Of course, here's Jeremy on increasing increased transportation in the area. And we're really working hard to make this a walkable neighborhood to provide good options for transportation that don't rely solely on single vehicles. So um, creating mixed use neighborhoods, um, safe walkable routes to school, um, transit service, and really thinking about how we connect up with our commuter trail network. Of course, one of the biggest concerns of people who live in the neighborhood is Flynn Lane. Flynn Lane has been uh, constantly used by people who are going up Mullen Road um, to take a shortcut to avoid Reserve Street traffic. Reserve Street is a nightmare. It is absolutely the worst. The intersection on Reserve and Mullen Road is one of the most deadliest intersections in the whole state of Montana. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> But one of the things that uh, they also are trying to do is open up uh, Mary Jane Boulevard, which is going to be a throughway, which is going to cross through uh, the the whole area of the uh, of the Mullen residence, England Boulevard type things. But also, they are creating a brand new system, um, a trail system or a big road system that's going to go from Mullen to broad to uh, Broadway. Um, it's going to be uh, George Elmer Drive. George Elmer Drive is one of the big things that is moving forward with the connectivity. So far, um, they're working on having a south and north, and they're working on that priority by working it on its way down. Of course, this is a reflection of the new development on the housing on the 57 acres off Mullen directly. When the city asked for the total bill grant, which was about $26 million, they got $13 million. Uh, the city decided to get a jump start on the project by offering $2 million and the, uh, the county, this, the county of Mo Missoula, matched $1 million to move forward on what they could build in terms of road and connectivity, trails, and whatnot. Um, of course, the, for, so far, uh, these are the main um, goals and the main plans that uh, German Keene wants these uh, projects to be uh, heightened and highlighted, and this is what he had to say. So these are the routes that we're prioritizing. We broke the project down a little bit more, in a little bit more detail. Um, to look at five road segments and five trail segments. And we're going through a process of, of prioritizing or deciding which ones of those we want to build first. Of course, as you're looking at this map, you can, can see that um, to the far left, that there's George Elmer Drive. Um, they're going to have a north and they're going to have a south connection, um, which will be turned into a major road that will not only create a new path to Broadway, but also add features of lengthening 
England Boulevard that connects through to um, Flynn Lane. And so it's going to be a long pathway that's going to be kind of like a new Mullen Road, um, essentially. Of course, there's a lot of projects in place, uh, but the connection to the roads are going to total around $465,000 to $600,000. And what, from what I've seen with the road construction, is pretty reasonable with the added build grant in place. Um, the build grant uh, is going to be asking for the 2020 um, rotation. Every year there's an uh, opportunity to uh, ask for a build grant. It's federally mo federal money that's uh, given and or uh, it's I don't know if it's necessarily awarded because grants are kind of tricky in those regards about um, the whole idea is you uh, apply for grants and you get the grants. And so far the city of Missoula got that $13 million grant. They had a press conference about last year about it. This year they're working on that 220 cycle to add to it as well. But so far um, these are the main projects is Mary Jane Boulevard, um, England, um, George Elmer Drive, and all the other connection trails and other projects will be uh, looked into as the money becomes available. But um, as the money that they have currently and the money that they're putting down is the one that's uh, are the projects that here talk he, that the projects that he was talking about in this meeting are the ones that they're going to be doing um, as soon as possible. Um, but of course. If you are interested in finding out more information, you can go to the Mullen Area Master Plan, which is called MullenAreaMasterPlan.com, um, where you guys can know everything I just showed you and more. Of course, you know, public comments for the public hearing have been extended. Um, they didn't vote on this, and they're going to vote on it sometime next week. But you guys have a whole week to decide, or uh, a whole week to comment on this project and um, just uh, give your opinion on where the money should be going and the money that's being spent as well. So, again, um, here is the City of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, it is a wonderful website where you guys can find out future meetings, current meetings, uh, agenda items where you guys can comment and you can email them. Um, it's there's a lot of links and there's a lot of there's a search bar where you can type in your ward representation, find out what ward you're in, and all that and more. Um, but I think I'm gonna wrap up right there. I do have a, a fun video I wanted to show you guys, uh, uh, but I, before I do that, I wanted to give you the most recent update on the COVID-19. So without further ado, here is Cindy Farr with the uh, city, uh, the city county health department. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the incident commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today's Thursday, May 7th, and this is my daily briefing. We've had no new cases, so we're still at a total of 41 cases to date in Missoula County. 39 of those cases were identified by testing and two were epi-linked. We've had 40 recoveries and one death, and we have no cases in isolation currently and no remaining close contacts. The state has had a total of 456 cases and has had 16 deaths. So first I want to talk about testing. Part of a responsible reopening strategy is ensuring that people with symptoms of COVID-19 have the ability to get tested. As things open up and people interact more, identifying cases and getting them isolated is going to be incredibly important. Remember that people with COVID-19 can have really mild symptoms and still be able to spread the disease early on. So it's up to all of us to watch out for these symptoms and to get tested. As we've covered, the CDC expanded the symptoms list last week. So if you've had a fever, cough, shortness of breath, chills, muscle pain, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, vomiting, or diarrhea, please contact a testing center to get a test. Our website, missoula.co slash cvirus, has an entire page dedicated to testing and screening centers. You can um, contact any of these providers. Do note that each may have a different associated cost or different insurance that they may accept or not accept. Um, the county's testing center offers testing by appointment and you don't need a doctor's referral or a prescription to get tested there. Testing is free, but our hours are limited to weekdays and our service is limited to Missoula County residents and people, healthcare workers and first responders who work in Missoula. You can reach our testing center at 406-258-INFO, that's 406-258-4636, and select option number two to get an appointment. Um, next, I want to talk about uh, reassessing. So we've gotten some feedback from community members that they're, that they're nervous about reopening. 
they're just concerned that we'll have a spike in cases that we may not be able to get in front of. We recognize that there will likely be additional cases of COVID-19, and we also acknowledge that there's a possibility of another wave of this virus. So here's what I can tell you right now. Um, we took a much more gradual approach to reopening Missoula. When the governor announced his reopening plans, we still had uh, multiple active cases, and we had lots of close contacts that were still in quarantine, and we were still getting new cases. So reopening quickly and without guidance was a wrong move at that time. We're now at zeros across the board. Does that mean that the risk is gone? No, it doesn't. As you've heard me say just a few moments ago, there can be mild cases that can spread the disease. However, that doesn't mean that um, putting our toes in the water is a bad thing. So with the increase in testing and keeping people aware of social distancing and other preventative measures, we can hopefully minimize the number of new cases and future spread. That said, we will be monitoring a lot of things here at the health department. We're gonna be looking at cases, testing capacity, how the virus is spreading, our healthcare resources, and our ability to do contact tracing. If things change, um, we will know and we'll be able to provide additional guidance um, or put protections into place. We do hope that we don't have to backpedal, which is why we took the approach that we did. However, a big part of this equation is all of you. Last week, our epidemiology team at the University of Montana showed through modeling that behavior really matters. A slight change in people's adherence to social distancing could mean a difference in the number of new cases that we see. And those actions really, the actions of all of us are really what's going to make a difference. If public, if the public health side of this isn't convincing, I'll make the economic argument. Um, cases really need to stay low for people to feel safe going out and doing things, which is what is necessary to give the economy the opportunity that it needs to recover. Either way that you go, social distancing really matters. In summary, yes, we will watch the numbers as well as many other things here in Missoula County. Um, this will be a continuous reassessment. However, you and your behavior are huge parts of, uh, of the mission success. So next I want to talk about graduation. We've had people asking us about graduation. We recognize the importance of graduation. We want this event to happen in the best way that it can. Our department is reviewing the guidance from the state and the CDC, and we're working with local school principals and superintendents, and we will share updates um, with you here when we have updates to give. So that's all I have for my daily briefing for today. Um, as always, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, click the notification bell so that you get notified when new videos are uploaded. You can um, follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department. We post lots of great information there. You can call 258-INFO if you have questions about COVID-19 or um, need to know what resources are available to you for you or if you just need to um, get a test scheduled through our testing center you can call that number and you can check out our information on our webpage at missoula.co slash cvirus so until tomorrow everybody stay healthy hey guys welcome back um, I just wanted to say that um Thank you guys for joining me. This has been an interesting time. One of the big things that are happening within MCAT as well is that we are um, moving forward with a lot of our uh, moving out of the uh, the facility that we're currently in. The uh, the building, um, by the end of this month, May, MCAT is supposed to be completely and utterly moved out of that uh, facility. Um, and part of this also has to do with the fact that the library is delayed when it comes to opening their doors. And a big part of that had to do with the COVID-19. And one of the things that the city of Missoula, or not the city of Missoula, but the library, the Missoula County Library is doing, is that they'll be starting to open the doors in August. And they plan to have a better strategic plan when it comes to social distancing. Um, it's going to be interesting uh, because they get thousands of people every day and just in the old library. Um, but since they closed, they've had to assess exactly how they're going to move forward with uh, keeping the place safe and also help curb the spread of the disease. If even one person has it, it's, as easy, it's, it's so easy to spread it to other people as well. So MCAT um, will be uh, technically closed, but you can always call MCAT 542-6228. That is our uh, regional number. You can also find out our contact information and more by going to MCAT.org. Um, but if you're interested in finding out more about my show, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and beyond. 
But for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. And but before I actually go, I'm going to show you a fun video that we made uh, just last Saturday for uh, with the power of Zoom. It's called Dude I Just Dude I Just Zoomed, um, a nice spinoff from Dude I Just Drew. And you guys get to enjoy this um, highlighted video made by uh, uh, Missoula's own Graham Martin. So without further ado, here's this. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Take care, guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. Welcome to Dude I Just Drew, a home edition, Zoom edition, whatever you want to call it. I'm your host, Roman Lemus. And, and yeah, welcome. And we got a very special guest. Everybody is here now. I guess you get to see everybody's behind the scenes. Wait a minute, who's um, the yeah. special guest? Which one's us? Which one's um, special guest? Our very special guest, Neil. You might know him as a as an audience member, usually. Just Sorry, I can't out. hear you. I think the mic's off. <laughs> did, did, did we, we start? Mean, did we start? <laughs> I think it's just messing with you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Could you do this to me? You do this to yeah, me the on the recording? I can't believe this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit uh, different. Kind of, kind of explaining the rules. It's, it's still the same, you know. General, five minutes, uh, four rounds this time, right? Is it four? Three. Three. All right. Odd number. Three rounds. Three. For voting Three. reasons. Yes. I'm gonna get crushed because I, I've never once picked up a pencil. <laughs> I've never, I've never used a mouse uh, that much. I took but, all um, my notes straight from memory. <laughs> um, yeah, five minutes, three rounds. The you, you two are gonna judge, right? These yeah. two. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Here's the first one. Poop rat. Poop rat. Poop rat. Okay. Poop rat. So it's uh so I'm gonna do this on the mouse to keep it fair. What do you want? What do you want, dog? <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't have a drawing tablet. Yes. Would have it would have been um more fair if there were a drawing tablet involved uh on Neil's side. Or it would be more of a traditional just kind of drawing. But um, yeah. Well it's not like I, th I think Poop Rat is only kind of like second fiddle to like the, uh, the Legend of Pizza Rat, because Pizza Rat is supposed really to be like, like an actual uh, real thing that people got like a YouTube video on, but now they have this huge lore about Pizza Rat. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what Poop Rat is. Well, maybe this won't necessarily be the uh, the Black Plague, but it will be definitely the ba 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 Brown Plague. Brown Plague. <laughs> The brown one. Uh, hi, I, I'm Neil. You may remember ah, me from some suggestions Whoa. as tall sheen magic? and a cube, but suspicious. Yeah, the the guy the guy who and most importantly, was... plain court. Oh, yeah, oh, plain court. Yeah, no, that that one was good. No, we have really. a whole lore when it comes to plain court and plain guy now. Looks like he's in a hurry or something. He's in a hurry. He's a pooper at. So I, I, he's got a poop on the table. Yes, <laughs> on the go. It's, it's not the poop you wanted; it's the poop you deserve. Yeah, especially especially now. Yes, it's the perfect poop—the kind of poop that once you go, you don't have to wipe afterwards. Yeah. Yes, and then my little signature at the bottom. There we go, poop rat. My right. turn now. Yes, it's, uh, your turn, Neil. Are you ready to go? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's poop see rat. Something. You're going okay. with no. That's not right. It's not. That's not it. This this means, but I'm going to the host. Whoa! It's using his excrement as a as a launching pad. It's excrement. It's it's. Excrement the rat's flying. Bird. So yeah, your first episode back. Uh, we're just talking about a a pooping. A pooping poop rat. Body poop, humor. Poop, right. uh, Hooping rat, first episode back. Uh, Potty humor, guys. <laughs> really, really low form comedy, folks. That's what I came here for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, there it is. Poop rat. Poop Whoa. rat. <gasps> wow. Okay, this is a 
this is a character design. This is a name of a character that doesn't exist, and you got to draw him. Okay. It's called Krennic the Cranberry. Krennic the Cranberry. <laughs> Krennic like the it. Cranberry. Original. He's the worst kind of. He's the worst kind of food at the uh, Thanksgiving table. Cranberry sauce. Oh so yeah. Really oh wonderful. yeah. You, you have the uh, the kind of like the uh, what's that called? The accordion kind of style body. Yeah, I've seen those before. Is that a Pokemon ball? No, that's the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> the one doesn't have the belt. The one doesn't have it. the. Um... Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Why it is it not a perfect circle? That's my question. Right, it doesn't need the belt. It just needs the. Uh... It just oh, needs no, the, that... the beam. No, it's an eyeball. Whoa, whoa! This is like it's actually happening in real time. No. No! Don't destroy no! it! Oh! Don't do it! <laughs> what is uh cranberry cranberry sauces um um Alderaan planet? What's it called? Uh, berry. <laughs> the planet's name is Chuck. What? <laughs> I, why? Why? <laughs> what does he look like? Uh, Ed, Eddie, from Ed, Eddie, yeah. Eddie. What the heck? That's it. Kill, kill planet Chuck. <laughs> Okay, so not only did I design Krennic, the uh, cr- the cranberry sauce that is, sees a can of sauce, um, but I uh, I did Robo Krennic, Planet Chuck, and his moon. <laughs> All right, we set up as a new canonical world for from okay. living. I can add the Death Star into it now, which is nice. Yeah. Like this is barely English right here. This is a, this is. Yeah. Krennic the Cranberry. He sounds like a general. Well, see, that, that's why I put in the Death Star, is it's like a Director Krennic. Director. One. Director Krennic. <laughs> Don't a... choke on your aspirations. Are the cranberries, like, red? Right? Yeah. You should be, like, somebody who's, like, really mad all the time. I, I really <laughs> like that face, though. <laughs> it's like, Adam Krennic. Honestly, yeah, that, 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 that could also work as, like, the back of his head, too, as he's looking onward. It's just, like, <laughs> a birthmark. Yeah, he he kind of reminds me of the Lord Commander from uh, Final what Space. What else can I is there? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah the he Lord. does. Oh, he's going to look a lot like uh, Lemon Grab from Adventure Time. <laughs> but he's, he's a cranberry. <laughs> he's a cranberry. What's a cranberry? Well, what's that red dot? It's blush. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Oh, highlighter. The highlighter, the highlighter tool. Dude, I just highlighted. Dude, I'm highlighting uh, Krennic the Cranberry's head. The oh, next... that worked out pretty well. I like right. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. He kind of looks like somebody who'd go to, like, coffee shops. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like the dodo or something. Whoa! Is this fly down? <laughs> This flies. Oh, let me get the eraser. I messed up. My hand slipped. Whoa. Yeah. I erased his whole body. And there we go. Critic the cranberry, everybody. Where's Beautiful. the at? Well, you should. Well, you should have like a portrait of like a note, like of like Critic's father. Oh, Critic's father. Yeah, if you got time. All right, you're out of time. I'm out of time. There. It's Critic the cranberry. There he is. The last Fingers. one is. Dumbledore, but he's lost his mind. <laughs> Dumbledore from Potter Puppet Pass. Dumbledore unhinged. <laughs> All right, so Dumbledore was in like, an insane asylum. Pretty much, he had, he had his hat and stuff like that. There's Dumbledore's little hat. Whoa! What is this? What is this drawing magic? And he and Dumbledore like is just like elf now. It's just kind of like, and then his hair. He's going out, and he's just like, oh, 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 oh my nose is inside my mouth. My nose is inside my mouth. It's an epic, it's an epic story, but I don't really want to tell you about it. Harry! But also, I want to say, uh, you're not a wizard, Harry. I'm the wizard. I wear pajamas. It's me. Well, I lost my mind. I see goblins! Has the crazy eyes, guys. Wait, gotta make sure he has the crazy eyes. 
Is this the part where he realized that Harry put his uh, um, name into the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he like turns like almost kills him. It's like, oh, settle okay. down. I actually read the book and the book said that he calmly told him, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Yeah, but in the movie he's like, Arr! <laughs> and the movie flies over. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. Wizard. Drawing. I'm going to draw Dumbledore's mind. <laughs> oh, he lost. You can't find it anymore. Ah. Oh, is that a brain, Neil? Yep, it's that's a mind. Brian. <laughs> it's Brian. <laughs> 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 Not Dude, what is that? His magic gun. <laughs> is that his magic gun? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. Dumbledore, I don't remember Dumbledore using a gun. Get back here! <laughs> Get back here! I'm gonna shoot you with magic. So, here's what I've got. I've got Harry reacting to Dumbledore lifting up his robe while he shoots magical bullets at his own brain. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh. Get back here. I'm killing the dementia. Bang bang. This <laughs> head's a little bit. Uh, I like if you know. This head's a little bit. It's very Ice King like. It does. It looks like the Ice King. It looks like the Ice King lost his brain and tried to shoot it. <laughs> Harry's there. Yeah. So yeah, my Dumbledore is lifting his robe up so that he can run easier. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I thought that was a cape. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's Dumbledore and his iconic cape. <laughs> like, I, uh, I, I definitely want Neil's on a shirt, but I think I'm going to give, go, give it to Rowan. Yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Rowan, too. But Neil's, Neil's is definitely <laughs> shirt-worthy. Yeah, it is shirt-worthy. It's so simplistic. And it's got, it's got a lot of charm. I still, like, I, I still can't believe that like that was the arm. I thought it was a cape for one. It being a cape is also pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> actually, he has a cape. It's, it's, that's the part that makes me laugh. Um, great episode again. Um, very different episode, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> had a good time. Had a good time. Uh, thank you, thank you for coming on, Neil. And um, hey, out everybody out there. You know, I know times are tough. Stay safe. Remember, follow me on Instagram. You can read my webtoons on webtoon. Uh, no, no more dot arts. No more with an exclamation mark. Uh, no more dot arts on Twitter, on Instagram. No more exclamation mark on Twitter, and then no more exclamation mark on webtoons. Um, just your website and stuff like that, and our YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube. Uh, anyways, yeah, all right. Um, like I said, stay safe and have a nice day. Bye. Bye.